know that China is currently the most populated country in the world. Its population is 1.42 billion people. Putting its population aside, there's a lot of unique attributes and characteristics that China has to offer that are both different to and similar to the U.S. Its uniqueness is one I want to share with you today so you're better prepared to do business there. In the fall of 2018, I did a, or fall 2018, I did a study abroad in China and I became fascinated with the culture. Ever since, I've been reading journals and articles and basically just anything I can do to learn more about business practices and its culture because of how fascinating it is to me. First, we're going to start with an overview of China. And then I'm going to compare the communication behaviors of China to that of the U.S. And then I'm going to end with a current event in China's business world. Given this information, let's begin by outlining some key characteristics that China has to offer. Whereas the United States is obviously a democracy, China is run by the CCP, or the Chinese Communist Party where everything comes to a consensus based on a group of people and uh, um, the people of China don't have a lot of power over the decisions. According to the 2019 Culture Grants Online Rural Edition entry in China, in the section government, the office of president is mostly symbolic. The real power comes from holding three different positions within the government. The premier is elected by the president and is head of government. The current president is Xi Jinping and the head of government is Li Qinghuang. The Chinese government is also extremely repressive. They don't have the same freedom of speech, freedom of religion, or the rights that the U.S. has. It is actually strictly prohibited to practice religion among the CCP. Given this, it's often assumed that China does not really respect the individual rights of its people. China has a very large economy, but its population is also very large. Because of this, it's at the level of a developing country. Although the country's wealth is on the rise, the wealth is not equally distributed among the people. This can be kind of interesting considering that usually among communism, wealth is equally distributed. So it's created a lot of tension among people. Also, it's interesting to think that um, China really holds the private sector in high regard, but it's also the same circumstance that the private sector can be hard to control under communism. So it can be confusing as to why they do hold it in high regard. Also, 28% of the population is part of the agricultural company. The main things that they produce are rice, wheat, barley, corn, and peanuts. But an overview of China's key features aren't the only things we need to focus on. We need to look at communication behaviors, and China has a lot of unique ones. According to Garrett Hofstede's 2019 website, Hofstede Insights, in the section Country Comparisons, China ranks high on power distance, low on indulgence, and low on individualism. So high on power distance. This means that inequality between people is respected and seen as okay. That means that it's probably not a good idea to kind of step up and say something to your boss when it's not your place, or to go against those of higher authority. Um, those in higher authority will sometimes even abuse their power because they have the right to do so. In the U.S., it's very different. Um, we're more medium on the spectrum of power distance. We do have superiority, of course, with bosses, but also, if it's the right time and the right place, it's okay to kind of step up to your boss and say something like, hey, I think this should go this way. Um, it's more accepted giving, given that we are um, more equal among people in the workplace. China ranks law on individualism. This implies that people will usually act on behalf of the group and not individuals. This is also called collectivism. So in China, it's more of an, um, a we mindset and not an I mindset. Um, personal relationships are very important. So you might even get a job because of a personal relationship you have or because of a family member that you're close to. And this is very different than the US where it's more of an I mindset, not a we mindset. You're basically just gonna look out for yourself and your close family members if you're living in the US. And most of the time you get a pay raise or a job opportun opportunity, it's gonna be because of something you did and not because of a bigger group power or because you're working on behalf of a group. It's more individualistic. Unlike the US where it is typical to indulge in meals and luxury items, the China, China is extremely restrictive. It may even seem bad or not okay to let yourself enjoy leisurely activities or fun times. This can lead to kind of um, a pessimistic mindset and uh, um, it might be because of China is under the rule of communism that people are kind of restricted on themselves just like the government is. Whereas in the U.S. it's more of a work hard, play hard attitude, so once you get your work done, once you do what you need to do, or you may close a big business deal, something that y'all are familiar with, then you can go play hard and, you know, kind of indulge in something that you really like. Now that we've looked at communication behaviors, I also want to touch on a current event. I found a fascinating podcast on the United Kingdom's BBC website, which was last updated in 2019. In the business report section, the podcast labeled China's Economic Growth Beats Expectations made some interesting comments about China's economic growth. In the first three months of 2019, China's growth was expected to be 6.4%. In 
Most of the economy is really just money being recycled by the government, so we're not really sure if this is really a good indicator on the welfare of China overall. In addition, there's a great deal of debt among corporate companies in China. The government says that this debt isn't going to affect the economy in the long run, but we just can't be certain. And recent statistics have shown that China, um, that these statistics may not be accurate as they appear. It's actually thought that it's more of a 4.2% rather than 6.4% for the economic growth. So the economy would really be smaller. Now that I've given a lot of information about how to do business in China, let's review. I first gave an overview of China, and then I compared China's communication behavior to that of the U.S., and I ended with a current event. So I hope that you all get out and explore and maybe visit um, China in your undergraduate experience and you would all really enjoy what it has to offer.